Well, hello there, everyone. Today is Sunday, November 27th, the year 2022. This is Mesky Finance coming to you from South Florida. And remember, I'm not a financial advisor, CPA, or attorney. I'm just trying to share stories, experiences, etc., to help you have a better financial future. That's it. I guarantee if you want it, you can have a better financial future. I guarantee that. But it's up to you. Remember, I make no promises, nothing like that. I'm just trying to help you out. But anyway, what do I mean by that? I believe in the power of the mind. Okay? The mind is stronger than the body. It is. It is. No matter what you think. Yeah, are you Mr. Universe? You're a bodybuilder? You go to the gym every day and lift weights? Is my mind stronger than your body? Yes, it is. How is that so? Would it be... Could I beat you in a physical fight? Eh, who knows? I'm a little guy. But I was a cop for 20 years. And I was in the military before that. So I may know a few tricks up my trade here for this old dog. But anyway, that being said, I will move on. But the power of the mind. All right. Back when I was a young man, I had a roommate. And this was in the country of Panama. And... We shared the same room. It's kind of like, you know, my bed on one side, his on the other side. And he traveled a lot in South America when I was in the Navy. And this was in the country of Panama. And at times he would talk to me about the what ifs. What if he had money? He would invest and he had a little bit of knowledge. He would invest in such and such a mutual fund. And I, when I first heard it, I think I was probably like, what's a mutual fund? And he explained it to me. Basically, you know, it's a fund that buys various stocks in the stock market and you put money into it and you then own a little piece of each company you know, that they hold. And he told me about some of the returns they were getting and they were, this was in the um, late eight, eight, 1989 or 1990 probably, probably 80, 88 or 89, one of those two years, probably 88 or 89. And he got me interested in it. And I used to go to the library and I then started looking at the magazine rack and I see Money Magazine or they had some other magazine too. Money was the main one back then. And I'd read that and it would talk about the hottest mutual fund, the best mutual fund of this year, the best mutual fund, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It got me excited. And around that time, I was a E5, I think, in the Navy. Paycheck wasn't that big. Um, I was going to be getting married, et cetera. But then I would, I mean, think how this played out. Okay, this is how it played out. I had... I was working on two and a half years in the country of Panama and I tried to extend for 12 more months and they turned me down. My original tour was a 15 month tour, I think. And you know, my original tour was a two month, two year tour and then they shortened it to 15 months or 18 months because of what was going on, the, the tension there and what was going on there and they didn't want people to stay there too long. But anyway, I did put in one extension request and they approved it. I did um, almost two and a half years there, but when I put in a second extension request, they turned me down. And so when I called for orders, um, they were willing to get. They wanted to give me orders to the island of Puerto Rico, and I was single at the time, but I was going to be getting married. So my orders came in as a two-year tour, and I was like, "Well, if I'm going to get married, I want to take the young, the missus with me." So then I talked about it with, I don't know who I talked to, the detailer, my chief, somebody. And I was told then if I did get married, we provide documentation to the detailer. And they changed my two-year tour to a three-year company tour. It was two-year unaccompanied, single guy unaccompanied, to a three-year married tour. Okay, so we changed. So I got to change to that. Um, but I had to make a decision then. Because I needed more time in the Navy to complete that three-year tour. I had to either extend more time in the Navy or I could re-enlist for more years. So I had something like maybe two and a half years left of my enlistment. And I needed to have three years. So I was debating extending six months. But then they had re-enlistment bonuses for my rate. I was an electronics technician. And if I re-enlisted... And, you know, for four years, let's say, I'd have a year left. I'd get a year and a half reenlistment bonus. And I was like, but if I did four years, I'm only staying in Puerto Rico for three years. Where can I go for a year? You know, that doesn't make sense. I'd be in a bind again. I'd have to do something to get a longer tour. Um, 
So I was thinking, so anyway, I decided to make, bring this story to an end. I re-enlisted for six years. I dropped the two and a half years uh, remaining on my contract and re-enlisted for six years. And it gave me a re-enlistment bonus for four and a half years, five and a half, six, three and a half years, I guess. So I got a little chunk of money, not a lot, a little bit. And what they do is they take a big chunk of tax out. And it seems like they didn't give it to you all at once. It might have divided up over a couple of years or something, but I forget. But anyway, I took that money and I put it into mutual funds. I had learned about IRAs by that time. They have traditional IRAs. So I believe I put like a thousand bucks into an international fund, Scudder, I think was the name. And then I put maybe a thousand bucks into Kaufman. That was one. And then somewhere along the way, I opened up a third account and put a thousand bucks into Janus. And Kaufman was a small cap one. Scudder was an international fund. Janus was like a growth fund. And then I ended up selling something and making it, put it all into Janus, I think, in three different accounts. A brokerage account, normal brokerage, taxable account. Was it three different accounts? A traditional IRA. Maybe it was two different accounts at that time. I, made, I got a third account later. Um, because I got a Roth IRA later. Whenever, I forget what year Roth IRAs came about, got a Roth IRA. But the point of that is, it took a little story from my roommate to light a spark, to get me thinking, to get my motivation to do it. While I was in Puerto Rico, I got a paycheck one day. We got paper paychecks back then. And I had a guy who worked in the same shop with me, and he asked me what I get my paycheck. And I told him something like, well, we got paid twice a month. I told him, whatever it was, I think it was like $189. I told him it was like $189. He, was, he looked at me, I was E5 at the time. Because I made E6 in Puerto Rico, but not, I was E5 at that time. And he was an E5. He had more years in the Navy than me, though, but he, so he made more money. And he looked at me and he's like, why is your paycheck so small? And I was like, well, I got allotments coming out. He said, well, what do you have coming out? And I said, I, if I remember right, I had money going into a savings account at a bank. And I had money going into at least one or two mutual funds. And I was putting $50 into each. Whatever I was putting into was $50 in each one. And he looked at me and he's like, why are you doing that? I said, I don't know, for the future. And he's like, Masky, it's $50. That's not enough for the future. Go out and have fun. Spend some, spend that money. Have fun. You know, what are you doing? You know, he kind of made fun of me. He's like, what are you doing? And I was like, man, I was quieter back then in Shire. I didn't really say too much to him. I didn't care. I stuck to what I was doing. I did end up, um, after finishing that tour in Puerto Rico, I, I did pick up E6. <coughs> I went to the state of Maine. <coughs> the two and a half years there, up near the border with Canada. I was an E6, so I was LPO, leading petty officer. And I wanted to get out. And I was I, I was called in to talk to the captain in Puerto Rico and told, called in to talk to the captain in Maine. Two different captains. Because I got my bachelor's degree while I was in Puerto Rico. And both captains... Um, strongly encouraged me to put in for OCS, Officer Candidate School. And I didn't want to do it. I didn't have the right mindset. I didn't want to do it. I want to get out of the Navy. So I turned him down, turned him down to second command. Um, got out of the Navy in Maine. After I got out, I got scared. I was like, what am I doing? I had nine years, six months, 10 days on active duty. What am I doing? I'm giving up this career. And so I called my command back. I was on, I took 90 days terminal leave. Called my command back and they said, well, if you want to stay in, you can come back up to Maine. We'll re-enlist you. And then you'll call your detailer, you know, you can get orders and you can stay in. I was like, oh, okay. Let me think about that. Thanks. Bye. And then I, I said, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so then I ended up joining the reserves, okay? And I eventually did stick it out in the reserves. I picked up Chief Petty Officer and I retired um, back in 2010 from the Navy Reserves, okay? As long as I live to age 60, I will get a pension. So what does this have to do with the mind? Okay, what's that with the mind? While I was investing in those mutual funds through the 90s, it motivated me. It got my mind thinking about finances. When I left active duty, I took a pay cut. <laughs> I didn't realize I would take a pay cut. The civilian world is expensive. When I was living in Puerto Rico or living in Maine, I had houses. The Navy either provided me a house in Puerto Rico, they provided me a house in Maine. I lived on base and I moved off base and rented a house. Navy paid my rent. Okay. Um, I got money for food. 
I got free health insurance and I got my paycheck and I was 86 getting a paycheck. So I was doing okay. Um, but then when I got out, all of a sudden, I had to pay rent out of my paycheck. I had to pay health insurance out of my paycheck. I had to pay everything out of my paycheck, all the bills. The electric bill and Navy housing, the electric was covered, water was covered. I had to pay electric, water, sewage, trash, etc. And it woke me up because it's like, civilian world's expensive. <laughs> That's what I thought. And then I became a police officer in 1998. And my starting pay salary was $23,000 and a couple hundred dollars a year. And I was like, whoa, donkey, that's not a lot of money. And when I was driving away from getting told I had the job, basically, or doing something, checking in, I checked in with HR and they gave me paperwork. And I realized I could retire with 20 years of service in the police department. Full retirement was 25 years. I was 30 years old. I was like, 25 years would be 55 years old. I want to do 20 years. I could have done 20 years in the Navy. I want to do 20 years. I, I By that time, my mutual funds had grown just a little bit. <laughs> and I was like, I'm just going to keep investing. I got 457 plan at work. The mine, I said, I'm going to keep investing. I'm going to put money into my 457 plan. And I'm going to retire at 20 years. And I told myself I was going to retire at 20 years. Okay. Fast forward in life, 20 years. I did retire at 20 years. But what I learned during those 20 years was I learned the knowledge that if I had wanted to, I could have retired probably 10 years earlier if I had learned about investing in real estate. I had considered it years before. I didn't do it. I didn't have the knowledge to do it. It wasn't as easy as it is today. This is where society has blinders on. Maybe they've got something in front of their eyes. It is easier to invest today than ever. But people still make excuses that they can't do it. And I'm telling you, it's easier now than ever. For those of you that watch this channel, you're hearing it from me. Go back and watch all my videos. You'll learn how I went from zero rentals to 25 rentals in under four years. All right. You'll learn how I went from being a blue collar worker, not making a lot of money, to being a multimillionaire. Okay. You got to get it right up here. You got to think about it, get a plan, formulate a plan. It's not that complicated. I've said it a hundred times. It's not rocket science. All right. But you got to want it. If you don't want it, it's not going to happen. No one's just going to give you a million dollars. Your boss isn't just going to say, here, here's a million dollars. If you're self-employed, a few of you might make it big and make it in millions, but most of you won't. But if you really want it, you can do it with investing. You can start nowadays with as little as $5 a month. I don't recommend that. I recommend putting more in there. But you you can use some of these apps, Robinhood and stuff. You can $5 a month, $10 a month, $25 a month, $50 a month, $100 a month. You can put it into mutual funds. You can put it into EF, EFTs. You can put it in buying fractional shares of individual stocks. So on and so on. And if you want to buy real estate, there are ways, and I'm not going to talk about it in this video, there are ways to buy real estate with little to no money down. Now, with that being said, I'd recommend for your first one, even though I used, I got help from one of those ways for my first house, I recommend for the average person, try to save up that down payment because it will put, it will get your mind into the right mindset of how to save for a down payment. Because if you want to be wealthy, for the strong majority of Americans, the first one of the first steps, not the first step, one of the first steps is you do need to learn how to cut expenses because how else are you going to save that down payment? Because almost everybody lives paycheck to paycheck. So how are you going to save that down payment? You have to learn to cut expenses. All right. Maybe I'll talk a little bit about that in my next video because this one's getting long already. So I'm going to wrap this up. But just keep in mind, if you want it, you can do it. It's not that hard. Just hang in there. Ask me questions if you got them. Put comments below. Ask a question, I'll answer it. You know, watch a variety of YouTube channels. Read some books on investing. Talk, get a mentor. If you know me, talk to me. I can't mentor. I'll mentor you through this channel. I know some folks I mentor individually. 
I might have room under my wing to take one or two more on, but you got to want it. You got to want it. All right. So that being said, have a great day. Maskey's signing out.